Hi, this is Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. I'd like to show you how to use a tool in this software called the Layer Tool. Now the Layer Tool is found, of course, here in the toolbox down in the area called Advanced. Uh, it's in here, not because it's difficult to use, but because it does advanced things. And most of the tools in here are pretty simple to use, but they're here because they do some advanced things, at least behind the scenes. The layer tool will be the most common advanced tool that you'd want to use in your web design process because it's so versatile and does so many things for you. So I'm going to grab a layer object and just draw it out here onto the canvas. Now, basically, it just looks like a gray box because that's what it is, but it does a lot more than just exist as a gray box on your website. And by the way, this is a light gray by default. I can change this, which I'll do right now. I'll make it a little bit darker just so you can see it better in the video. But the layer can pick up any style you want. Of course, I'm using the solid mode. It can be an image. It can have a, a gradient background or a pattern or texture or whatever. I'm going to use a solid. Um, I'm going to make it be darker so you can see it a little bit better. It could also have a border if I wanted it to, and I could change the color of that border, how rounded the corners would be and the width of that border, etc. But for now, I'm going to leave it this way because I'm more interested in showing you what the layer tool does. Uh, you can find out how to dress it up and make it look the color you want later. But right now, I want you to, sh I want you to see uh, some amazing things that the layer tool does. Okay, so all I've done is change the background color to be a little bit darker, and here's my layer. Again, it just looks like a gray box, doesn't it? It is. I'm going to put it in the corner of my website and hit F5 to show you that's really all it is right now. It's just a gray box in the corner of my website. So I'm, I'm using Preview to see what it would look like in a browser. Uh, this would be my website, a website with a gray box in it, right? Okay, simple enough. Let's close that Preview. And I want to show you a trick that the Layer tool can do uniquely. I'm going to double click on it. And inside the Layer Properties, is a setting called Relative Horizontal Sizing. Now, let me show you what that means. I'm going to click this box to choose that. Now, what happens is this object has just become what we call responsive or relative to the size of the device that's looking at it or the browser window that's looking at it. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to show you something that you'll notice is much different. Now, when I hit the Preview button, F5, I, you can see that I do have a gray box in the corner of my website. But you'll also notice that as I change the size of my browser, the size of that box changes relative to the size of the window. So it'll shrink down as my window shrinks, and it will grow and expand as my browser window does too. This is called responsive web design. Now I'm showing you a very simple example just so you can sort of see the mechanics of it. Let me show it to you again. I'm going to bring it over halfway across my canvas. My particular website I'm building at about a thousand pixels wide. You can tell from the width of my ruler here. So 500 would be somewhere around halfway. Now when I hit F5 in preview, you can see that my gray box, my layer, is halfway across my website. But if I have a smaller browser, you can see that gray box is still halfway. It's smaller, but it's halfway because it's relative to the size of the browser. Okay, hopefully that's clear enough. Now, you would think, now, why do I need to know all this? Well, actually, there's a lot of things you can do with that principle of using the layer tool. For example, what happens if I stretch the layer tool all the way out, not just to the edge of my canvas, but just past it a little bit? You'll notice that I went just past the edge of my workspace, right? Well, now remember, it's relative to the size of the browser. So what's going to happen is the software is going to interpret this as a layer that goes beyond the width of our website. In other words, infinitely. Watch. I click F5. And now what I have is a gray box that never ends. No matter how wide my browser window gets, I now have a layer that will absolutely never end no matter how wide I go. So this is an infinite or fluid um, object on the website. So whether somebody's looking at it through a small browser or a really big screen, they will see that layer go on infinitely. Now that's important because that gives you a whole level of modern design that works great on any device, any browser window size. There's a lot of things we can do with that. So let's say I was going to make a header, for example, for my website. Well, I'd make a layer, 
and maybe I would put some objects in this layer, of course, because that's what layers do. They can they contain objects. It's a container. So I'm going to put some objects in here that I've been saving here off camera just to save us some time. I've already got them made. So let me go get them. Okay. So before I made the video, I grab some stuff that we can use as a demo. And I'm going to put these objects inside my, my layer, which I'm calling my header. So I've got a logo, which I'll put up here. And by the way, let's uh, make this a little bit bigger so that my logo fits. There we go. It's inside my layer. Now, the reason why I know it's inside my layer is because the layer lit up when I drug this into it. You'll see. And by the way, it's behind the layer right now. But so let me bring it forward. Arrange, move to the front. There it is. So my logo is actually not inside the layer until that blue line lights up like this. Boom. There you see the blue line. Okay. Now my logo is inside my layer and here's some text that I made. And Oh, again, let's move this. Let's arrange this to the front and let's put this in here and I'm going to change the color of this. So it'll show up better. Instead of a black font, we'll make that a white font. looks better on that gray background. And then let's say I made a um, navigation bar which I made one previously here. And again, it's behind, so I'm going to move it to the front. Arrange, move to front. And again, it's not inside the layer until that blue line lights up just like that. Okay, so now I've got three objects inside my layer. This becomes my header. I have several advantages now. One, first of all, I have one big object that contains all of these. You can see as I drag and drop the layer, everything goes with it because they're all part of this container now. So that's convenient in and of itself. But the other thing that they are is they're going to become relative to the website as well. Here's what I mean. So first, let's click F5 and preview what we have. Okay, so here's our infinite layer, which is good. Here's our objects on our layer, all working fine. And as I stretch them, you'll notice even though the layer behind it, the gray box stretches, the objects are static. They stay the same. They aren't moving with the size of the browser. And there's a time for that. You may not want them to. That's that's a design decision you, you can make. But what I like to do most times is I like them to also be responsive to the size of the browser. So here's what we do. Double click on the layer. Remember it's relative in its horizontal sizing, but I can also make sure that everything within the layer is centered, centered to the size of the browser window for the user. So just by changing that one simple thing, Watch what happens to my layer header. I'm clicking F5 to preview. And now you'll notice that as the browser window changes size, the objects in the layer are relative to the center because that's what I told it to do by making a layer that has relative horizontal sizing and centering the contents of the layer. So that's one use of the layer tool. And it's a great use. It's probably the most common use for making your headers and your footers and just areas of your website that you want to manage in all in one big group. So let's make a footer really quick just to see um, what that looks like. I'm going to grab another layer. So I'm going to the advanced tools. I'll grab a layer and I'm just going to make a box like this. Let's make this one uh, a little different color. Make it uh, maybe a, a solid black or something like that. Let's make it like this. We'll make this be our footer. Maybe we'd put our address and phone number and email information in the footer. You'll notice that when I do this, I put it all the way over to the edge of the canvas here, all the way to the left, because if I don't, there'll be a white space right there. And I'm going to also have to stretch it beyond the, uh, the right edge, beyond the, the ruler. I'm going to double click on it to make sure this is also relative in its horizontal sizing. I'm going to center everything that's inside of it, even though there's nothing in it right now. We can have that ready. Click OK. And I'm going to leave it right here so I can show you what happens if I leave it not against the edge. I'm going to do F5. And again, while it is stretching, you can see no matter how wide the window goes, it goes all the way to the right. But remember, I left that space. And so that space is going to be there. So if you want this to be full across the screen, you want to put it all the way to the left edge. Stretch this box all the way beyond the ruler. And now I have what would make a great footer for my website that's also responsive. Hit F5. And you can see it's, you know, obviously I'd put it more toward the bottom of the page, but I'm leaving it here so you can see it in the video. So that just gives us a great starting point. In fact, this is a good way to start your website is to maybe make a footer and a header just to kind of frame in your work so you can fill in the gaps in between for your content. Now, another thing that's actually really popular in web design these days is to um, make this footer 
go all the way to the bottom of the page, which you can do. I'm going to do that here. It's going to be a little tricky because of the video that we're making. But so let me move this down. And uh, I'll move this way down to the bottom here like this. Now, watch what happens when I click F5. So here's my website. And it's actually got a black bottom to it that just stops right there. I'm going to move the camera so you can see that a little bit better. Here we go. So you can see that the footer just sits on the very bottom of the website. It has this big, broad space. That's actually very common in web design these days to have a big bottom footer where you might put more links to the rest of your pages, your privacy policy, that kind of thing. But at least it gives you kind of a framework to work in. So there's the bottom of my website. There's the top of my website. They're relative. They're responsive. And of course, the objects in them would be centered because of the way I said it. So it's a great way to begin uh, making your website. Now, that's just one use. I've just basically shown you one use of the layer. And it is a great tool to at least get started with. Now the layer does some other fancy things, but I'm not going to do that in this video because it becomes quite extensive. And we'll do that in, in other videos, other tricks with layers, so to speak. But for now, if you're just getting started, learn to use the layer tool for your headers and footers. Or if you just want to make a block you know, for your content. It's not a bad idea to, you know, here have some white space for maybe your content. And a very popular thing to do would be to have a big bar of space that has some kind of background or color. So I could actually take a layer, stretch it out, and style it in such a way that maybe it, instead of being a solid color, it could be an image from my computer, or maybe it could be a gradient. And of course, I could change the colors of those gradients, you know as you probably can guess. So let's do something like this. And I can make this be, you know, just an area of my website. And again, I would want to make it relative and horizontal sizing. I double click to do that. Maybe center the content and stretch this. I could stretch this this way right up against that. And now what will happen is I'll have a big block area where maybe I'll put, uh, I, I would put content text or images or contact information or whatever. It's just another way to design your site uh, to look a little bit more up to date. This is a popular, uh, like I said, way to design your website. So anyway, that's the basic use of the layer. And in future videos, I'm going to show you some really cool tricks that the layer does that uh, will blow you away. But for now, play with the layer tool and use it to group objects together, at least make your headers and footers out of maybe some content areas, and you'll really enjoy how it works really well to make a nice professional looking website with 90 Second Website Builder.